happy new year 2018 hope you guys have a great new year and a great 2018 so for today's video we're going to continue on a little bit of what we talked about in the past which was uh, transfer standard we did a voltage transfer standard we looked at one using the ad 584 and then a one that used a microprocessor and got a lot of good comments on there and, and some of the comments that i got were well can't you just adjust your meters from that or how do you know if that's good and those are all the really good questions and um, basically it comes down to this okay there's no such thing as a clean signal there's no such thing as a perfect reading you're going to have to decide for yourself what is an acceptable amount of error and go from there i don't work for nasa chances are you don't work for nasa no human lives are, are depending on what we do here in our home labs so we don't have to be that exact if you work for a large company they are going to have procedures in place whereas the equipment is calibrated and maintained within a certain degree of error for the home shop guy um, you have to do it yourself and it's not like you need to send your stuff out if you have a bunch of multimeters and you take a reading from a bunch of them and you find out what is the average you can easily tell which one is the most accurate multimeter and go from there so what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a 10k resistance standard and we're going to do that using these resistors i have here these are 10k 2 watt metal film resistors um half a percentage uh oh god i can't talk again 0.05 percent accuracy these are high precision resistors so they're going to give us a good reading but i guarantee you not one of them is going to read 10 10 10 1 0 0 0 0 point 0 0 0 0 0 they're all going to have some degree of error that's that's the way the world works nothing's perfect so what we're going to do is we are going to find the percentage of error we have we're going to find that with a little formula by taking the exact measurement minus the approximate over the exact multiplying it by 100 and that will give us our error percentage and we'll be able to tell exactly how close we are within the accuracy of the equipment we have and we're going to use the uh, Fluke 8840A multimeter to do a four wire measurement for that, a Kelvin measurement. That's gonna give us our most accurate measurement and we're also going to back up our readings by checking them against some other multimeters. So let's get started doing that. All right, we're gonna start with this super cheap meter, which I have found to be very accurate. All right, so we put our leads on there. And you can see we're getting 10.01K. All right. Now let's grab another meter. In this case, we'll go with the uh, Unity UT61E. And we'll use the very nice probe master leads. Nine point nine nine two. Okay, so you can see there's a there's some difference there. So how do we say which one is the more correct? Well, we're then we're gonna take reading from yet another meter in this case we'll use the anang meter ten 
10.01. So it would seem like the peak meter and the Anang meter are the most closely related to each other. Does that mean they're the most correct? No, it just means they're the most closely related to each other. All right, and then for our final measurement, we are going to do a four wire measurement with the nice Fluke 8840A. We'll put our outer wires on. These are our input wires. And then our inner wires, the sense wires. And we get 9.9952. So we're kind of very close, but not all that close. If we take the reading from our fluke and apply what we have here. So we say 9.99 six which is where we're at right now minus 10 over 9.996 and do the math we get our answer 0.04 percent so that's well within spec of the 0.05 so i think we have a trustworthy enough reading so let's disconnect this and we're going to put together our resistance standard okay i got us a little project box here which i've drilled a couple of holes in and we'll put in some banana connectors here And I can get my fingers to work. Just like that. I'll put two of them on. All right, our box is constructed. Now we'll put our oops, put our resistor in there if I can get a hold of it. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and tin these screws up as best I can first. Assuming that my iron has enough heat. Maybe yes, maybe no. It should. Might just take a minute or two. I'll come back when I've got these tinned. All right, those are nice and tinned. Now we'll. get the resistor yeah now we will get the resistor Good. Now this one. Okay. Yep, 
that is nice and soldered in there. So then we can put on our cover and we'll take a final measurement. Okay, everything is hooked up. I've zeroed out the readings and we get 9.984. So we will write that on here. 9.984. Now it says 5354. Alright, we'll call it 9.985. And that is our home brewed resistance standard. Boom. Now, whenever I want to check my meters, I know that I have a 10K resistor that reads 9.985, which is close enough for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And again, Happy New Year. That's it. I'm out. Peace.